Praise God. So good to see every one of you. And uh, praise God. Let's all stand to our feet today and just prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. And uh, the Lord is good. Amen. He is good and His mercy endures forever. And praise the Lord. You know, this morning, Samuel uh, and Victoria, they're in North Carolina. They couldn't be here this morning, but I'm thank- we're thankful and we're honored today to have uh, Isaiah and Libby lead-, lead us in worship today. And we're just going to worship the Lord. Amen. Just give Him glory because the song is from our heart of, good- of the goodness of the Lord. So let's be- just begin to worship Him. Amen. Let's just- why don't you lift up your hands and-, and just begin to praise Him. Father, we thank You, Lord, that You are good this morning. You are worthy of all the praise you're worthy of all the glory god this morning we pray that lord our hearts would be captivated lord by your spirit lord captivated by the words of our worship lord to you because lord you are good and your mercy endures forever lord help us today let your anointing god rest on this place in the name of jesus we thank you lord God, let the weak become strong today. Let the weary be made strong in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down. Worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord. is filled with his glory we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together we sing Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Yes, the earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord renown. And together we sing. is filled with his holy holy is the lord god almighty the earth 
is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. Yes, the earth is filled with his glory. Yes, the earth is filled with his glory. I just want to thank God this morning for His grace, for His mercy. I want to thank Him for where He's brought me from in my life. I was talking to a gentleman this week who had known me in my past life, and he uh, had found our church website. And he said, Brother, you've come a long ways. And uh, I give God all glory and all honor for the things that He's done in my life. I know they're going to be watching this morning, and I would like to do this song for them. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that Dissolve like snow The 
sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God I love you, Lord For your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire in the darkest night you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life Yes, all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, running after Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now and give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Running after me With my life laid down 
faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. You know, every one of us, if we look behind us in our life and we, we can see where mountains were, but have been made a plain, just as the book of Zechariah said, the Lord told Zechariah, I'm going to make those mountains a plain. And every one of us, we can look at our own lives and look behind us and say, you know what, God, your goodness has been following me all of this time. Even when I didn't see it, even when I didn't feel it, or even notice it, God, your goodness has been there the whole time. Oh, the devil is a liar this morning. Our God is faithful. He loves us. His goodness, David said, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, I just feel that today. Let us be stirred up with the goodness of God. Let's sing that again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will see. Of the goodness of God, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am made. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender. my life laid down I surrender now and give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me and all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise today? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As they are continuing to play. We're going to pray for the sick this morning and just pray and believe God for miracles. How many believe the Lord is still working, working miracles? He is. So if you need healing in your body or prayer in any way, 
I would ask you to come forward and we're going to pray for you and I'm going to ask some of our prayer warriors just anybody just come up and help me pray this morning so if you need prayer this morning once you come up and we're going to pray for you this morning amen I believe that you're my healer I believe you are all I I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. And you hold my very moment. You calm my rage. You walk with me through fire and heal all my disease. I trust in you. I trust in you. That you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. I believe that you're my portion. I believe. Come on, let's sing You're that together this morning. More than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Oh, nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. sing it this morning nothing is impossible Lord yes Lord Jesus nothing is impossible nothing is impossible for you you hold my world in your hands I want to pray right now for every need that maybe has not were not did not come forward today or those watching online can let's agree together right now in prayer and agreement father we just come before you we thank you lord that you're the miracle working god and right now we ask you for miracles for your favor in the name of jesus lord upon every need every person in this sanctuary lord every person every family lost oh lord us collectively and lord those watching by the online lord we pray for your power to flow in the name of jesus god we ask that lord you would reverse lord everything the enemies tried to do lord let there be a reversal in the name of jesus and lord let there be an acceleration of your blessing we pray in the name of jesus we believe it lord we thank you and we give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Can you just turn around this morning and just greet somebody? Greet a few people this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget, oh, how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Oh, yes, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget no, never. One more time. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. Oh, what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll never forget, Lord, what you've done for me. Praise God. You may be seated today. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the rapture this morning. Praise God. I'm sure you are too. Praise God. Sharon uh, could not be here this morning. She just was not feeling well. And it was just better for her to rest. And so uh, if you think of it, pray for her and the Lord will give her a quick recovery. And uh, we want to pray also for uh, families and, and those affected by the tornadoes yesterday uh, here in Tennessee and in, and in Kentucky as well. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't mention it earlier, but can we just stop and pray for them right now? People have lost family members and friends. And so. Father, right now, we just lift up, Lord, the families and those who have been affected by the tornadoes. Father, that could have been us, Lord, but we pray. We pray, God, that you would comfort and strengthen, that, Lord, you would intervene, and, and Lord, that you would help those families, those grieving families right now, and those that have lost property. And, Lord, we ask that, God, you would help, Lord, provide, especially for your people, oh Lord, that you would help them right now. In the name of Jesus, and Lord, in and all, that you, Jesus, would reveal yourself to people, reveal your love, reveal your goodness, that you, God, even you would even use something like this to reveal your goodness, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, that you're faithful, and we say it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm thankful that the Lord hears us, and uh, we need to keep on praying for those, those people again, that have been affected uh, by those tornadoes. Just a few announcements. Again, remember, next uh, Sunday, uh, December 17th, is our potluck, uh, Christmas potluck dinner and uh, uh, gift exchange. If you got one of those little uh, slips of paper with a name on it, uh, please make sure you bring your gift. And, um, and if you think about it and you would like to, uh, if you already bought a gift or if you have it, maybe, maybe buy an extra gift, okay? Buy another one just in case someone comes and they didn't get a gift. It would just be nice to have everyone get a gift, amen? <laughs> so if you think about it, uh, again, bring, bring two or three or four or five seconds. <laughs> bring, bring a whole basket full, amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, just uh, uh, I mentioned this on Tuesday. But I'll mention it again today that uh, our, as it concerns our Christmas schedule, we will be having service December 24th. That's Christmas Eve, just Sunday morning. That's a Sunday. So we will be having service that uh, December 24th. And actually, Pastor Asher Weber is going to be here to minister that Sunday. So I know, I know that's a busy time for some. But if you're, if you're able to make it, I encourage you to make it. It's going to be, um, I'm looking forward to a powerful service. And again, Pastor we Aster, Asher Weber uh, from Brighton, Michigan is going to be here uh, to minister that Sunday. All right, so we'll have service December 24th. We will not have service Tuesday, December 26th. But we will have service Sunday, December 31st. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's how we will, uh, that's how we're going to handle it. Um, also, just want to mention something real quickly as well. 
uh, well, Sid, are you able to put the, the fundraiser thing? It hasn't been updated, but we've got a couple more thousand dollars that have been added to it. So we're, we're at 94000 right now. We'd love, we, that's right. Praise the Lord. Would love, it would be wonderful to be able to get to that $100,000 uh, mark by the end of the year. And uh, as I've mentioned in the past, the last Sunday, uh, which uh, every month would be the 31st, we'll have a building fund Sunday. But uh, we would love to be able to get to that, um, that, that 100000 mark by the end of the year. So if you can give, I know you've get, many of you, if not all of you, given sacrificially to that. And I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful for uh, the family that we have here at Covenant Church. I really am. I'm so thankful. So, and then also, today's a special day. It is Diane's birthday. And uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Diane. Happy birthday to you. Amen. She turns 35 again. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We'll ask your husband. Amen. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes, you are complete. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to worship the Lord with our giving, our tithes and offering this morning. If I get with Steve and, and, uh, and just, yeah, there we go. We're going to worship the Lord again with our tithe and offering today. And uh, I'm so thankful that, that the Lord blesses us. The Lord, he says in his word, he loves a cheerful giver. He loves everybody. But the idea is that he expresses his love in a greater way. And we can experience his love in a greater way as we give. Because it's better, as Jesus said, it's better to give than to receive. And so uh, we're going to praise, we're going to believe the Lord for great things in this coming year. And uh, praise God. Let's pray. Father, we're just so thankful today, Lord, for the privilege of worshiping you with our giving. Lord, everything that comes into our hand comes from yours. And we expect you, Lord, as your word says, that you would give, you give seed to the sower. And that, Lord, you make all grace abound. And we, and we just give you glory and honor and praise. And everyone said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Lord. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is born. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, well, could we just give the Lord one more hand clap of praise today? Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles, if you would please, to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. Thank you, Isaiah and Libby. Didn't they do a wonderful job this morning? thankful for them. Praise God. I wish that I could sing a lot better. <laughs> and I wish I could clap my hands too. I can't clap my hands yet. This, if I try to clap my hand, my pinky says, don't you, just stop it. <laughs> so I, all the skin is healed. It's just I have a broken bone. It's a, just a broken pinky. So it don't feel good. So that's my, uh, that's my pity party today. So, um, all right. <laughs> uh, you know, whenever it did happen, I'm chasing it. Whenever it did happen, and I went into the emergency room, you know the thought that was crossing my mind? The thought were crossing my mind of friend. I have a good number of friends, not, not a lot of friends that have missing fingers, but I have some friends that have missing fingers. And uh, I know Brother Lauren, he's got a missing hand. 
And then I had just seen in the news, all, you know, we, like we, all of us have, we've seen in the news the, the war that's over in Israel and, and people coming in with, with limbs missing and all that. And I thought, as I'm there and I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to lose my finger, I thought, you know what, it could be a whole lot worse. It could be a whole lot worse. And, and uh, well, I think we always need to put things in perspective. Uh, it, all, it, it could be a lot worse. And so, uh, but... I'm looking forward to this thing getting healed somehow, some way. Praise God. But Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. And tonight or this morning, we're going to be reading an extended portion of Scripture, verses 21 through 24, and then verses 35 through 43, about Jairus and, and his daughter. So many of you probably heard of this passage before, but I think it's a, I know it's, it's what the Lord has laid upon my heart this morning to, get, uh, to bring to you and I'm preaching to myself as I'm preaching to you and it begins in verse 21 Mark writes now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side that's the other side of the Sea of Galilee a great multitude gathered to him and he was by the sea and behold one of the rulers of the synagogue came Jairus by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet try to get a visual if you could here's Jairus he's a He's the ruler of a synagogue. We'll deal with that in just a moment. But he comes and he, and he falls at the feet of Jesus. Everybody can see him, what he's doing. Verse 23. And he begged him earnestly, saying, my little, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. What words right there? Notice faith. She said, come, and, and, and my daughter's sick. But if you come and you lay your hands on her, she will be healed and she will live. Verse 24, so Jesus went with them and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now skip down to verse 35 if you would because those verses in between from verses 25 through 34 deal with the woman with the issue of blood. And she intervened right in the midst of this walk from where Jairus met Jesus to his house. And this woman, as the crowd, I mean, throngs and multitude, probably several thousands of people were just together. And this woman pressed through the crowd. She had an issue of blood for 12 years, spent everything she had, and, and, and was an outcast somewhat because of her infirmity but she said if I can only touch him if I can only touch his garment I'm going to be healed and she pressed through the crowd she touched the hem of Jesus garment and the Bible says immediately that flow of blood was was stopped and she was healed so that happened on the way there Okay, and then it picks up in verse 35. And while, while he was still speaking, that's to the woman, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher or master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. I'm going, to, I'm going to stop here for a moment. I just encourage you this morning to take that statement of Jesus and take it as a personal word to you right now. As if you were in a room with God all by, or Jesus all by yourself and he was looking at you and he says, do not be afraid, only believe. I want you to take it that way because I believe very strongly that's what the Lord intends for it to be. An in-season, personal, rhema word right to you today. Do not be afraid, only believe. Then it says in verse 37, and he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a uh, tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. And he, when he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Verse 40, and they ridiculed him. Notice that. They ridiculed Jesus. They went from mourning because they were professional mourners. They were hired mourners, basically. But they went from mourning to ridiculing, from mourning to mocking. And because Jesus said, Why do, why do you, what are you weeping for? She's not dead. She's only sleeping. 
But you know what? It did the natural mind. It doesn't comprehend the power of Jesus. And it says in verse 40, And they ridiculed him, but when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. And he took the child by the hand and said to her, Tulathai kumi, which is translated, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl arose, arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. But he commended them strictly that no one should know it and said that something should be given to her for her to eat. This morning I just want to minister for a few minutes and, and from the words of Jesus in verse 36. Do not be afraid, only believe. And again, I feel very strongly today that this is a word that God wants you to hear this morning. Here, it's, all, it's for this church collectively, but it's for you individually for you to understand that Jesus is saying to you, do not be afraid. I just want you to believe. I want you to trust me. It's going to be all right. I just want you to trust me. It's going to be fine. I'm in control. The devil's not in control. Circumstances are not in control. The, the government's not in control. No, I am in control. Don't be afraid. Just trust me. Just believe me. Just look to me. Mm. Let's pray together. Father, we are so thankful for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. We thank you, Lord, that you are still the healer. You are Jehovah Jireh. You're Jehovah Rapha, Lord. You're Jehovah Sidkenu. Lord, you're all. We thank you today. And we ask you, Lord, right now for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That, Lord, makes ministering easy. Lord, I ask you for your help. And I ask you, Lord, for your anointing upon us to receive. Let your word take root in our heart. Lord, strengthen and encourage. Let the weak become strong today, I pray. Lord, let, let, let doubt be turned into faith. And let sorrow be turned into praise today. We give you glory and honor and praise. And we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. You know, from this event that took place in the ministry of Jesus, I want to bring out several points about faith that, that, that this passage brings out. Because at the very heart of this passage that we've read today is, is the words of Jesus to the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, when he said again in verse 36, Do not be afraid, only believe. You know, from that statement, there is, a, there is so much that's in it. Do not be afraid. Don't, don't worry. Don't fear. Only believe. That means that in our life as, as a child of God, we are going to, and I'm getting ahead of myself somewhat, but we are going to go through things in life. It is inevitable. It's going to happen. You can't avoid it. You can't pray it away. You can't rebuke it away. It's going to happen. There's going to be some tough times that come. There's going to be difficulty, difficulty in our life. But I'm, I'm here to encourage you today that Jesus, the Jesus that lives inside of you, the Savior that died on Calvary for you, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, and your Father who absolutely loves you, His grace is greater than anything we go through in this life. Hallelujah. His grace is greater. His power is greater. His love is greater. His provision is greater. His peace is greater. His healing is greater. My Lord, His, His, His future for us is greater, so much better than our future for ourselves is. Mm. But it's greater. Only do not be afraid. Only believe. But in, you know, he mentioned here, do not be afraid or fear. Fear, get this, fear is actually faith in ourself. That's based on what we see, feel, and hear in the natural. Again, faith in a sense is actually fear in ourselves, or, or it's faith. Faith, it, fear, <laughs> fear is faith in ourself, or fear is faith in, in, in the storm. It's faith in the obstacle. It's faith in the mountain. It's faith in how, how bad it is. And I'm not belittling that this morning. But faith, or fear, again, is faith in the wrong object. And it's so easy to do. It's so easy for us to slip from faith into fear. 
Just like Peter did when he was walking in the water and it just happened. He had the faith. Get this. Peter had the faith enough to step out of the boat and start walking on water. That's faith. Or absolute craziness. Okay. okay. But it was faith. It was faith because sometimes faith often will look like it's crazy in the natural. But Peter had the faith to step out and realize, I want to be where Jesus is. I want to be where he is. So he stepped out and walked on the water. But, in, but here he's walking on the water, experiencing the supernatural power of God one moment. But the next moment he's sinking because he got his faith off of Jesus and onto the storm. I want to encourage you today that it's so easy for that to happen in our life. And not if, but when it happens, when you sense that happen in your own heart. Hear me today, that yes, it it ought to grieve us, because it grieves the Holy Spirit, it grieves the heart of our Father. But understand this, that you're not alone, and and, and when it, again, not if, but when it happens, and you begin to sink, and I'm so thankful that God doesn't just let us sink and, and Boom, in that moment. No, it, it's, it's normally a gradual thing. But thank God it's gradual. But when you sense that happening, do what Peter did. And he reached out and he said, Jesus, would you help me? And Jesus picked him up. And so we can go so easily from faith into the fear mode. But I encourage you today, keep, keep, let's keep our eyes, keep your eyes this morning on the one who never changes. The one, your Savior, who never changes. The Father who never changes. He is constant. He's the same. He never changes. I, I just was, maybe it was yesterday or Friday, I just, it was, it was stirring in my heart. I was talking to someone, and, and, and we're talking about things changing, and how you know, this is that, you know, one day it's this way, and another day it's, you know, a, a different way, and it just, things, are, this world is constantly up and down, constantly changing. The news cycle, as you know, it's just constantly changing. And, but, you know, with all of the knowing that, that, that things are just constantly changing and the media in particular in the world that we live in is trying to feed our mind and bombard our mind with constant change, information overload. You know what I'm saying? It can, it's not necessarily even sinful stuff, but it's just, you know, some guy doing a cartwheel, you know, whatever. And it's just information overload. And just this like constant thing. It's so easy to get caught up in that. But I, oh, I want to encourage you today, and I'm preaching to myself. Let's keep our eyes on the one who never changes. Let our faith be grounded in the one who never changes. That whenever we sense the winds of change blowing, we can know that I'm on a firm foundation. Hallelujah. I'm on a firm foundation. Mm. And one of the things that we learn about faith from this passage is that faith will always be tested. Faith will always be tested. But don't let that scare you because remember the words of Jesus, do not be afraid, only believe. But I want to let you know today or refresh your pure minds by remembrance that faith will always be tested. Your trust in the Lord is always going to go through a test. It always will. Can I say, oh, it, all, it always will. If, if it's not tested, it's not real faith. But it's going to be tested. And, and uh, I, I think of the, the words that the, the Lord spoke to Isaiah in Isaiah 55 and verse 8 when he said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. And, and why do I bring that up? It's because he said there, And it's a constant theme throughout God's word that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. In other words, God doesn't think like we do. (laughs) And thank God for that. Hallelujah. God is not like man. He Again, God never changes. He is consistent. He is faithful. You can trust him. He's trustworthy. And he said here, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your way. You're not your thoughts. But, and I, again, I bring that up because sometimes in our, in our life, in our Christian life, we can, we, it's just normal. We want, thing, we want life to be just 
fine and no problems. We want, we want no drama in the family, right? We don't want anything like that. No drama, no problems. Just everybody is normal, okay? <laughs> Everybody's normal. I just want everybody to be normal. We just not want everything, no problems, everything. But you know what? That doesn't exist. Whenever you, whenever you meet a normal person, you're going to see all kind of weirdness in them. Okay? <laughs> because weird is normal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'm not insulting you. I'm just saying the truth. <laughs> I'm not insulting myself. But the, we, our faith is going to be tested. You know what? At times, our, our faith will be tested in ways that we never thought it would ever, ever be tested. God can even allow things in our life that we never, ever thought that we would ever go through. Think of Jarius' daughter here. Jarius for a moment, I should say. Think of him. He's a dad. He loves his daughter. No mention is, no, there's no mention of the mother here, but there's, there's every indication that, of course, he was married and, and uh, pr currently married. And, but a mom and a dad, I mean, to, to think of it, a 12-year-old daughter that is on the verge of death. That, that's something that you don't plan for necessarily. You know what I'm saying? You don't plan on that. You, you, there's nothing you can do for that. It's something that just comes and, and it just hits you right in the face, figuratively speaking. And it's like there, my oh, my 12-year-old daughter, my precious little girl is going to die. What do I do? And, 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 and if you have children or, or uh, you, you understand that your children are the most precious thing to you and... And you take a bullet for your child. You take a. You'll just. You'll. You'll do that for your children. And here's here's Jarius, and he's, he's in that place that that he's experiencing a test of his faith, like he never thought he would ever go through. But you know what happened? The test. The test that Jarius went through. It brought something out of Jarius that Jer even Jarius probably didn't even know was there. And what was that? What it, the test, the, the, the sickness that his daughter was experiencing, it brought out of Jarius a desperation to the point that he would lay his position aside and say, I'm going to go find Jesus and grab a hold of him and kneel at his feet and plead with him. Get this, if he didn't have that test, Jarius most likely would have never done that. And the reality is in our life, there are... And, and, we shouldn't be this way, but God knows that we are, and that it takes a test. It takes the trial of our faith to bring us to a point of desperation like we've never been before. Now, we should always be desperate. All of our prayer life should not be, all, all of our prayers should not be 911 prayers. Our prayer life, for the most part, should be thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, you are good. If you got ten minutes to pray, praise for seven and petition for three. I'm serious. If you got ten minutes to pray, if you got an hour to pray, praise him for most of it and petition for three. Because God knows our needs. Yes, he wants us to. Yes, he wants us to to tell him about our needs. Oh, but he said, he said in Philippians chapter four, he said, "Do not worry about anything. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication." With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So as that sweet incense of prayer is going out before the Lord, let it be mixed with thanksgiving and praise. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I worship you. And many times we won't, we won't praise him like we should until we experience a test. But faith will be tested, and our faith will be tested in ways that we couldn't ever imagine. And there's a statement that is that, that's out, it's used in the secular world often, but I think it's really actually a biblical principle when we bring Jesus into it. And it's this, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. For us as a child of God, God doesn't allow the test to kill us in the sense of destroying us. He allows the test for yes, for us to die to trusting in ourselves and trusting in and, and, and living life based on what we 
uh, see, feel, and hear. He, he, yes, he, he allows the test to eliminate that in our life, but he, he didn't allow the test to weaken our faith or to destroy our faith. No, he, no, he allows the test for our faith to be strengthened. Mm. And I was, I was thinking about this the other day that, that the, uh, for some reason it came to my mind when I was in 19, it was back in the late 80s, it's a long time ago, but uh, late 80s and I was 16 years old and uh, they, were, they were asking us at 16, what are you going to do when you graduate? And for the most part, my answer was, I don't know. And uh, even though what was going through my head at that time, I was thinking about militaries, thinking about maybe different trade schools, whatever. And then a lady, uh, and then my mother asked me one day, she said, well, have you, have you ever thought about Jimmy Swagger Bible College? And I said, no. Um, and I didn't want, I'd know, I don't know, and, and I didn't say it out loud, but I thought to myself, no, and I really don't plan on it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you've heard me say this before, but then a lady in the church, a lady in the church felt led of the Lord to pay for a ticket to fly from upstate New York, Syracuse, New York, to Baton Rouge, and attend a campus days, and I was 16, and I wanted nothing to do with Louisiana. And when I graduated, I wanted to go to Florida uh, and just because that's like southern New York. And it's just like I want to go to Florida, the beaches where my dad lived. My dad lived in Florida. I thought, I'm going to go down to Florida. I'm just gotten, I'm getting out of New York, but I am not going to Louisiana. But that weekend that I was there, the Lord changed my whole direction. He changed my direction. I never forget it. I was at the altar in a service. And I was at the on I was there, and the Lord moved upon my heart, and I sensed the presence of God like I had, at that point had never experienced before. And here's here's what I bring that up because when I went back, when I went back, I was I went to a Baptist school, and I thank God for that Baptist school. But they were very conservative, they were um, they were uh, uh, very very strict and conservative, uh, and. Most of, my, most of my friends, they were going to either the military or they were, they were going to Pensacola Christian College, uh, which is a very uh, conservative Baptist school. And so I came back. I came back and I said, I'm going to Jimmy Swigert Bible College. <laughs> and that was the last thing they wanted to hear. <laughs> a graduate from their school saying, I'm going to Jimmy Swigert Bible College. But now all of a sudden, the chatter started. The chatter started. It was a test. It was a test to me. I was 16 years old. I'm not, I'm not some grown man. I'm a 16-year-old, you know, and, uh, uh, young man. And, and all of a sudden, I had people saying, oh, no, no, I, I, could, I could sense it. They were, they were saying stuff. And when I, when I, but you know what? I knew that they loved me, and I didn't take it personal. I really didn't. I knew that they loved me, and I was like, it was all good. I, I, I understood because their stereotype of Pentecostals is that when Pentecostals get together, they scratch at the walls, foam in the mouth, and they hang from the ceiling, you know, like we're a bunch of bats or something. You know, they just kind of, I, un, I understood that, <laughs> which we're not, by the way. We're not, we're not <laughs> um, but I understood their stereotype, but I heard the chatter, and and, and, and I had been baptized with the Holy Spirit, actually, around that, so not, not in Baton Rouge, but I was up in New York, but around that same time. And the, and the principal, who was a man of God, the Lord used in my life greatly, but he was wrong in this area uh, concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He preached like a week of, of chapel services. He, che he preached a week of chapel services, which we only, normally we only had one or two a week. But he did a full week about about from the Bible, from their Baptist perspective, teaching on how the baptism with the Holy Spirit is not for today. That we don't lay hands on the sick today. We don't do that. We don't, there is no gifts to Spirit. All that passed away in the first century. And, and he used 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10, I believe it is, as, as one of his main verses where it says, and, the, and, and when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. And I read that, and, and he emphasized that and I thought oh wow that, that's I mean he's, he's preaching from the Bible I don't I don't understand I I've, I've man I'm just I'm just closer to Jesus and he's saying it's not he's saying it's not from God 
It's just emotion, or it could be demonic activity. And I'm thinking, how could it be that? I, I, I love Jesus more. <laughs> and I'll never forget, I went to my, and it was, it was a test. It was a test. And I went to my mom, and I said, Mom, I, I, Mr. Carpenter was his name, and he said such and such, and I, it doesn't make sense. I'm confused about it, especially that verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And she said to me, she said, Bobby, that the perfect there, when that which is perfect has come, is not talking about, it's not talking about the, the canon of Scripture being finished. It's talking about the resurrection. When the resurrection comes and we're perfected, then that which is in part, the tongues, the, the gifts, the Spirit, all of that will be done away with because we're not going to need that in glory. Hallelujah. 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 And when she said that to me, I was like, light bulb went on and like it was like oh that makes perfect sense i get it it makes more sense but it was a test it was a test what was i going to do and it, it, as time went on i, I didn't plan on sale this but as time went on what happened was i had more pressure more pressure on me more pressure on me more pressure on me don't go down there don't go down there don't go down there i had at one point i had uh, several Baptist ministers. I had, I had ministered at a Baptist church um, for our school and just a short little message, a preach, uh, about eight-minute message. And afterwards, I, a group of ministers, they got around me and, and one of the things they told me, they said, young man, when you, you did a good job. That, you know, they were encouraging, but they said, when you preach, don't point your finger at people. Don't point your finger like that. That just leads to emotionalism. <laughs> and I was respectful because my parents taught me to respect my elders. <laughs> That's a good thing. It's a Bible thing. And so I heard what they said, and I understood, their heart. I understood that they were sincere, but sincerely wrong. And the words went in one ear and out the other. But I, again, I was respectful to them. One of the things I thought when they said that to me, don't point your finger, the, really, actually one of the first things that came to my mind was Billy Graham. I thought, man, the Prince of Baptist preachers points his finger all over the place at people. And you, so you're not good Baptist then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I'm gonna, I don't care what you say. I'm going to keep on pointing my finger. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> Billy Graham points his finger. I'm going to do it too. But this, they also, they, they, they said to me, they had heard that I was going to JSBC, and that was the last thing they wanted to see me, and they were, began to discourage me. They began to tell me, this is what they told me. They said, if you go down there, you are ruining all, you are, you are completely ruining any opportunity for ministry if you go down there. You're ruining, they, so they said, literally, they said you are ruining any opportunity for ministry if you go down there. But here, that, you know what that was? That was a test. That was a test. What was I going to do? Hear from man, listen to man, be fearful. Oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the chirping, uh, uh, what am I, uh, am I going to go by that? Or, uh, or am I going to go by what God has laid upon my heart? Am I going to do what God said? And, and I knew I was only 16 and 17 at that time, but I knew I had heard from God. I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful today that, that God can make His Word known and real to the young and the older. You don't have to be some spiritual giant to hear from God. You can be, a, you can be anybody. You can be a young person. You can be a Daniel, a teenager. But know that you've heard from God. Hallelujah. And I just want to encourage you today, when you hear from God, you stick with it. Hallelujah. You stick with it. Faith will be tested. It will be tested, but you stick with, with, with the word of God. Hallelujah. You stick with it in the name of Jesus because it doesn't matter what people say. You will be blessed when you follow Jesus. You will be blessed when you keep him first in your life. You will be blessed. It's a guaranteed promise. Your marriage will be blessed when you keep him first. Your own life will be blessed when you keep him first. Faith will be tested. Point number two, real quickly, is that faith in Jesus will also cause us to be desperate to the point that we don't care what others think. 
And I just, this goes right along with what I've already said. But point number two, again, faith in Jesus will cause us to be so desperate to the point that we don't care what other people think. We have to think for a moment and realize who Jairus was. Jairus, in this passage, he was the ruler of the synagogue, a local synagogue. And he was a religious leader. And religious leaders in that day, they absolutely hated Jesus. They did not only not believe in him, but they wanted him dead. Think about that for a moment. They wanted Jesus dead. They wanted the Messiah, the true Messiah. They wanted him dead. And there were some, there were some religious leaders, we know this from the Gospels, that did believe in Jesus. But get this. For those that did believe in Jesus and they came out with it like Jairus did, they didn't make it, they didn't normally go, or certainly let me back up a little bit. Those religious leaders that did believe in Jesus, for example, like Nicodemus, they normally did not come out and publicize it. They didn't make it public. They kept it secret. They kept it private to themselves. But in this situation, again, uh, uh, Jairus' faith was so tested that he became so desperate that he didn't care what other people thought. In that culture of that day, if you were a religious leader, especially like, or any Jew, but especially a religious leader like Jairus, that meant that religious, that, that Jairus, I should say, that meant that he would be mocked. It meant that his, all the honor that culture and society gave him, all of that honor would be gone. They would dishonor him. They would actually take his position away from him. They would disfellowship himself, not only him, but his family. They would disfellowship themselves from him. He would be an outcast if he showed public faith and, and trust in Jesus. Do you get that? He would be an outcast if he showed, if he kept it private. He could have he could have sneak he could have just snuck up beside Jesus and whispered in his ear. <laughs> Jesus, I don't want to lose my position. So could you just hear me? Listen to me real quickly, Jesus. Could you just, just come and come to heal my daughter? To, I, I, please, no, no, no. Don't say anything, Jesus. Don't say anything. Don't tell anybody. Just, just between you and I. Just he could have done it that way. But he didn't. Because faith will become so desperate. That we don't care what other people think. And he got to a point that he, as we read it in earlier, he got to a point where in verse 22, it says, Behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jerry's by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. He said that publicly. And I want to tell you today that this, this is what the Lord desires for every one of us, but he uses the test of our life to do it, to bring us to a point that we are so desperate that we do not care what other people think about our devotion to Jesus. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And it's not, this is, what I'm saying when I, don't, when, I, when I say we don't care, it's not a disrespectful type of not caring. It's just that when it, com when it comes to my devotion and my faith and my, and my need and my love for Jesus, there's no other opinion that matters except God's. Hallelujah. And we live our life in that way. Jerry is new that day. He knew that day when he made that public declaration of his faith in Jesus that he would very likely lose it all. He knew that. He knew that. I'm going to say it again. He knew that day that very likely after, when he made that public declaration of Jesus that he would lose it all. But you know what? It was worth it. His daughter was dying, and he knew that Jesus was the only one that could make her well. And Jesus was passing by, he pressed through that crowd and kneeled at his feet and again cried out and begged that he would come. And he showed the faith when he said, if you just simply come and lay your hands on her, she will be healed and she will live. But as the passage goes on, it says in verse 35 that while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher anymore? 
And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Then it says in verse 37 that he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and he saw, the again, the, the tumult and those that wept and wailed loudly. He came in and said to them, Why are you doing this? She's not dead, she's sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But this is what he did. He said, and when he, had, and when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him, that would have been Peter, James, and John, and went in where the child was, was lying down. Point number three here I want to give as it concerns faith is this, is that faith, our trust in the Lord, will put it puts doubt out and it invites more faith in. It puts doubt out, true biblical faith. It recognizes that in every situation there's going to be doubt and there's going to be faith. There's going to be doubt and fear and again, and and actions and words that are spoken that are based and moods and attitudes that are based on what we see, feel, and hear. And then there's going to be faith that is in what God has said. Faith in the character of Jesus. Faith in the goodness of God. Faith in what he's accomplished at the cross. There's going to be fear and there's going to be faith in every situation. And Jesus in this moment, he exemplified biblical faith. When he got there, he said, no, 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 no. Okay, you're going to have to get out. You're going to have to get out. Jesus was not being rude. He was not being arrogant. He was not being like that. No, he was being polite. But he said you politely, you're going to have to get out. Because you're not a faith. And get this real faith, a biblical faith. It puts faith out and invites more faith in. And I just encourage you today. That's a battle that every one of us go through in our life. And it really every single, it can be every single day of our life. We have to make a decision. Am I going to believe the lie or am I going to believe the truth? Am I going to believe the lie of stress and anxiety and and, and fear? Am I going to believe the lie or am I going to believe the truth? And faith puts doubt out and invites more faith in. I encourage you today, put the unbelief out. Recognize it for what it is. When those thoughts of doubt come in, recognize it for what it is. That's a thought of unbelief. It's a thought of fear. And I reject it, but I embrace the truth. Hallelujah. I invite more faith in. So reject reject the doubt. Reject the discouragement. Reject, the, reject it, all of that. Reject it and embrace faith. Get the doubt out and, and let faith come in. Because you know why? One of the things that we see consistently in God's word is that God works in the, in the atmosphere of faith. And he blesses us in the atmosphere of faith. You know, we get encouraged in the atmosphere of faith. And even, get this, even if you are not, you, you're, there's not a church service, or you're, it's not on television, you turn on the, the television, and, they, and, and what they're saying is not, it's not building you up. You can do what David did. The Bible says that when his own men wanted to stone him at at Ziklag, he said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. Hallelujah. And I encourage you, when you don't feel an atmosphere of faith and others around you, don't blame it on them because the enemy wants us to play the blame game. Whenever, whenever, whenever we're in a trial, one of, the, one of the enemy's tactics is just start blaming people. It's their fault, or it's their fault, or it's my fault. And, and you speaking, it's just, and, and just the blame game. But I encourage you, don't play the blame game. Don't go into that mode. No, begin to praise him and thank him. Put the fa- doubt out, bring faith in, and just praise him. Hallelujah. Last thing I want to point out in this passage is that faith doesn't bury the blessing faith doesn't bury the blessing you know in this passage uh, jesus said in verse 39 why why are you weeping why this why is this commotion here she said that he said the child is not dead he's only sleeping and again the bible says that the crowd that they ridiculed jesus that went from mourning to mocking just like that they ridiculed him what are you talking about what are you talking about? Sleeping? No, she's dead. We felt her. Her body's getting cold. She's dead. She's gone. 
And they actually, messengers came and they told Jairus right there in front of Jesus. She said, he, they said to him, your daughter's dead, Jairus. It's over. Why trouble the master anymore? It's over. It's over. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. It's not over. She's not dead. She's only sleeping. And I want to encourage you today that faith, faith in the Lord, faith in what He's done for us, faith in His Word, it doesn't bury the promise. It doesn't bury the blessing. In that situation, the crowd and, and the situation, they should have been preparing for a funeral. They should have been preparing for a burial. But she, when Jesus is there, it's not over until He says it's over. Hallelujah. And faith doesn't bury the promise unless God says, okay, it's over. But if God doesn't say it's over, don't bury the promise. Again, in our, in our, in our self, this will, oh, in our, and the enemy will work on us and our own flesh, our own stinking thinking can, can be stirred up and we can, we can look at certain situations and we can even look at our family or we can even look at ourselves personally. And say it's over, you failed too much, you did that, you did that, you're not good enough. And start co trying to compare us with other people and, 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 and oh, you did this. And, and, and just try to bring up a, a boatload of sins. And look at this, you're, you're, you'll never be anything. You might as well just give up. You might as well just have a burial service. Bury the promise. It ain't going to come to pass. But I encourage you today, when Jesus, when you invite Jesus... When you invite Jesus into that situation, into your, not just, into your heart primarily, but you, you got a problem, there's a test there, and you invite Jesus, Lord Jesus, I need your help. Lord Jesus, I need your grace. I need your strength. I need your help, Lord. I need the help of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Would you help me, Lord? When you invite Jesus, I tell you, it's not going to be a burial service. Hallelujah. Do not bury the promise because it's not dead. It's only sleeping. It, looks, it may look like it's dead on the outside, but it ain't dead. I said it may, it may look it on the outside. It's over. You might as well just can't. No, it's, it's all over. But God says to you this morning, don't bury the promise. Don't bury your blessing. Don't bury peace. Don't bury victory. Don't bury joy. Don't bury, don't bury the life that God designed for you to live. Don't bury it because it ain't over. I remind you today. I remind you. I sense this. I remind you by the word of God. You invited Jesus to come. The situation that you're in right now only gets between you and the Lord. But I sense it in my spirit. You invited Jesus to come Hallelujah. and to fix it. Did you not? Did you not invite Jesus to come over and to fix it? And to help you and to provide. Did you not invite Jesus to do it? Did you not beg him? Oh Lord would you come and touch me. Touch this situation. Because I know if you come and you touch it. It's going to be made right. You invited Jesus. And Jesus did not deny your request. He said yes. And he's here. He's right there with you. And he's not saying no. And he's not preparing for a burial service. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. You have to excuse me. I thank God for that. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep on jumping as long as I can jump. He ain't preparing for your burial service. My Lord, hallelujah. Get Get ready for a revival. Get ready for renewal. Get ready for a blessing. Hallelujah. Your blessing's not dead. It's only sleeping. It looks like it's dead in the natural. It can look like it's over in the natural. It can look like that in the natural. But God's not working on ba based on what is in the natural. He's working on, uh, on the basis of, of, of Him who works in supernatural ways. He's not limited by our own limitations. He has no limitations. I encourage you today. Again, I'm going to remind you, he has no limitations. 
Like the old song says, he may not come when I want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on-time God. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I wish I could sing hallelujah, <laughs> but he is. He's an on-time God. I remind you that he's an on-time God, and he will. He has, and he will. Uh, Isaiah and Libby can come back. Praise God. That's it, what I want to give you today, what I feel the Lord put upon my heart. Faith is going to be tested. It will be tested in ways that we, couldn't even, that we didn't expect, that we didn't imagine. I know I've experienced that, and I can, I'm pretty much 100% sure that you haven't, you didn't plan for it either. You didn't see it coming, but God did. He knew. But before, before the ever problem came, he said to us in his word, he said, I will go before you. I will go before you, and I'll take care of all of your enemies. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, he, said, he said that. He said, I will go before you. And I, I, I saw your need before there ever was a need. Before you ever saw it, I saw it. And I knew it was there. I knew it was happening. And I prepared for you even before there was a problem. And you invited me to come over and to help you. And I'm here with you to help you. Stand to your feet if you would please today. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know it's a simple word today, but I sense it in my spirit. Do not be afraid. God's saying that to you right now. Take it again. It's a personal word from the Lord. Do not be afraid. You invited me over. I'm here. You invited me to come. I'm here. And I'm here to touch you. And I'm here to I'm here to revive. I'm here to revive and restore and renew what needs to be revived, restored, and renewed. I'm going to do it. I'm going to reverse that which the enemy attended for evil. I'm going to reverse it. I, I shared it Tuesday, but there's two, two words primarily that's been in my spirit as we go, as we are about to go into the new year 2024. Reversal and acceleration. I believe in God for a reversal of those things that the enemy intended to destroy us. God would, God would just reverse it. How that manifests itself, I don't know, because a reversal is not, it is a, a reversal is not always manifested in the natural. There can be a reversal right in our own spirit, our own inner man. Our body can be decaying, but in the inner man, there's a reversal that I'm not leaning upon my own physical body. I am leaning on Jesus more than anything else. But I'm believing God for a reversal, and I'm believing God for an acceleration, an acceleration of His promises, an acceleration. Because there's the promise, there's the process, and then there's the possession. And it's the process in which, as I mentioned Tuesday, it's the process in which He buries us like a seed. He puts us in the ground. And we feel like, oh, nobody, nobody sees what's going on. Nobody knows what's happening in my life. But God sees. He sees. He knows. He hears. And again, you invited Him over. <laughs> Hallelujah. And praise God, what was buried, He will. There's, there's going to be a resurrection. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, today we're so thankful. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. That, Lord, you have come. Lord, we invited you and you came. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for that. We believe you right now for miracles in the name of Jesus. Miracles of provision. Miracles in every area of our family, of our own personal life. Lord, we ask you for reversal and we ask you for acceleration in the name of Jesus. And Lord, let us put faith, let, let us put doubt out today and bring faith in. Lord, help us to be desperate today. We thank you, Lord. And we say it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. If you if you want to this morning, you feel that, you can come to this altar. Well, I want to pray with you today. But wherever you are, make it an altar as we sing here this morning. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. One more time. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Turning back. Hallelujah. Is that your heart today? I've decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. No turning back. No matter what, it doesn't matter what happens, there's no turning back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's close today in prayer. Father, we're just so thankful, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us. Lord, you've given us so many precious promises. Today, Lord, let us go from this place, Lord, with your, with your presence, Lord, because we leave this place, but we don't leave your presence. And Lord, let this word just stay in us today, this afternoon, this evening, this whole week. Lord, let us be continue to be encouraged in you, Jesus, to continue to put doubt out and faith in, Lord, not to bury the promise, but Lord, to look to you and trust you. Lord, we thank you today, and we say it all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Clap of praise if you would, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Well, God bless you today. Let me remind you again, next Sunday, the potluck dinner. If if, if, uh, Sheila does not have your email, uh, let Sheila know your email because she'll be sending out the sign-up genius to bring food. All right? God bless you. Loving each other. We'll see you next week.